Greetings, Turians. Chaos here. Welcome to T Edit 102. Today we're going to be discussing the Utilities tab within T Edit. So if you open up T Edit and the right side here is collapsed, you'll see T uh, Utilities here with a little arrow above it. Click the arrow it will expand and you have a bunch of different tabs here, a bunch of different options. So first off, we're gonna be looking at world properties. The first thing that we have here is the in-game name. This will be uh, how the world appears when you look at the world list. So you could change this to be whatever you want. Uh, keep in mind that this is different than the file name. So if I were to go into open, and you see I have here tutorial world non-flat. If I were to rename this, it will not change how the world looks in game, the name of the world in game. You have to do it over here. Uh, these are separate entities. They don't need to be named the same thing. So below that we have world ID. You don't really need to worry about that. Revision is how many times the world has been saved in game. I believe it also counts how many times the world has been saved in T-Edit, but I'm not 100% sure on that. You could also see the seed of the world. Uh, I named this world seed tutorial non-flat. I tend to just name the seed after the world just for fun. You have all the moon phases here. So like the new moon, full moon, uh, the waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, etc. You could choose which uh, phase you want. You could choose what style of moon you want it to appear as. I like the ringed one. Um, you have the day and uh, night cycle here. Here's daytime from 4.30 a.m. to 7.29 p.m. Or you could click this uh, is daytime check to make it nighttime or uncheck it. And this will be 7.30 p.m. to 4.29 a.m. And when it's nighttime, you could also set it to be a blood moon if you wish. When it's daytime, you could set it to be a solar eclipse if you wish. Below that, we have a uh, use sundial. And what this means is the sundial is on cooldown. And this would be the length of the cooldown. How many days are left until the cooldown turns off. Uh, you could bump this all the way up to 127 days if you want. I'm not sure why, but you can. Below that, you have weather conditions for rain, slime rain, sandstorm, clouds. Uh, these are pretty straightforward, easy to figure out. Be beneath that, we have surface level and cavern level. Uh, so if you want to raise your surface level, you see how I drag this closer to zero and the surface started to appear here. This is how you could uh, do things that I did, like with the Arceus Mining Facility build that I did last week. Uh, I had the surface and cavern layer all the way up to space, uh, to the low gravity level, right below uh, where I put the, the build itself. And that's how I accomplished that. So I just lowered the number on the cavern lever, a cavern level till it reached space. You could do it the other way around so that you have, uh, say, all the way down here. Say I want this to be sky. I could just oops, bring this all the way down until here. And now we have sky. We have a little bit of surface. We could just bring that wherever we want right here and then cavern right below it. You can go all the way down until there's no surface or cavern layer in the world, all the way below hell. Uh, just note that you can't have a cavern layer lower than surface, and surface always has to be above cavern. Beneath that we have spawn meteor, and this is uh, indicating whether or not your world has spawned a meteor already. You could uh, go ahead and turn that on or off, depending on what you want to do. You could toggle your world into hard mode or expert mode. Uh, right now my world is corruption, but you could toggle it as crimson. Crimson. What you'll notice is it won't actually change the biome. All these blocks are here, that's set. But what it will do when I select as crimson is down here, it'll give me the option of Brain of Cthulhu on the boss list as opposed to Eater of Worlds. Beneath that we have Altar Smash. It's zero to three, and this is what indicates um, 
what you're telling it how many altars that you've smashed so it knows if it's going to grant you more of the or the hard mode or of the first second or third tier so that's what the uh, altar smash is for orb smash it's the same sort of thing but with the say eater of world orbs um, it wants to know if you've smashed three will the next one you smash spawn the boss well if you've done one then you'll do two more to spawn the boss stuff like that you could also determine what kind of ore you have in the world. This won't change the hard mode ore within the world itself. So say I have uh, pushed this world into hard mode. It's got cobalt, but I want palladium. And I select palladium. It won't convert my cobalt and palladium into palladium. But what it will do is next time I start smashing altars, it'll start spawning palladium instead of cobalt. Uh, you could do that for the other two types of hard mode ores as well. Next we have the boss list. And the list of bosses is for uh, indicating which you've killed on the world already. For the most part, these are for gaining progression things. Um, like you can't get into the dungeon without having killed Skeletron. So if I click that, I can now go into the dungeon safely. Uh, the Eye of Cthulhu will spawn if you have 200 health unless you've already killed it. So for my adventure maps, I always check Eye of Cthulhu is killed, so it doesn't just spawn on you randomly while you're progressing through the world. I do the same thing for the Twins, Destroyer, and Skeletron Prime. And basically you could just tell the world which of the bosses you've killed uh, to get certain, um, I guess, events out of the way, uh, requirements out of the way, without having to actually kill the bosses. You have the same thing for event bosses killed, and for the old one army, uh, which tiers you've completed. And you have NPCs saved here, and this is all the NPCs that you could find within the world. You're just telling them, stop spawning these NPCs because I've already spawned them, or I've already saved them. So you don't need to look for them anymore. You could also set the angler's quest for the day to whatever fish that you want. Um, you could indicate which invasions that you've downed. You could even start an invasion of your own. Say I want this to be a goblin invasion. I could adjust the size and the target of the invasion. Next we have these tree things. Uh, so the way this works is the world is kind of divided into three segments for your trees and you could set where the segments begin with the, uh, I guess it's four, four segments. With these three bars, you could split the world into four segments of whatever you want. And you'll see if I scroll over here to the left, uh, maybe I won't do the jungle so it's easier to see. I'll go to the right. So we have this style of tree here. Now beneath it, you see these four segments. These are the areas that you just split the world into by dragging these bars. And on the fourth segment, I could change the style of tree that I want to appear here. So you'll see every time I choose a different number, the tree appears a little bit different. But that won't affect the trees over here in the third segment. So I could set this to one, you see nothing happens. But if I come over here and I set this to three, this style of tree changes. So you could have four different styles of trees from left to right um, that you could give uh, specific styles to. You kind of have the same thing going on here with caves and cave styles. You'll need to go through, uh, zoom in, take a close look and see uh, what kind of caves you've got going and what kind of styles you have available to you. And uh, kind of experiment around with the caves just like you can with the treetops. They work the same way. Uh, Below that, you have the different backgrounds for all of the biomes. You can only choose one background per biome in the world, but here are all the options. You can't really see what they look like in T-Edit, but you can change them in T-Edit, then go in vanilla and check them out afterwards. And that's the gist of the World's Property tab. So next we have the Special Tiles tab. All this is is uh, if you grab your arrow tool here, and you right click on say a chest. Do I have a chest in the world? 
Um, I'm sure I do somewhere. Here we go. So if I right click on this chest, the special tiles will allow me to name the chest. Uh, it could also choose what kind of chest it is. You'll see that it actually changes the sprite. Uh, you could set what inventory you have in here. You can modify the inventories, um, uh, the amount of the inventory, or what kind of enchant it has on it, or none. Uh, any item in the game you could put into a chest from this as well. The other thing that you interact with, with this uh, special tiles, is signs. So if I go into sprites here, and I type in sign, and I just grab a sign, place it anywhere, and then right click on it with my arrow tool, you'll see special property has changed into sign. I could tell it what kind of sign I want it to be, it'll change the sprite. It also includes the tombstones and stuff like that. And then you could fill it with whatever text you want in there. And with both the chest and the sign, you have to click save down here for it to count uh, any of your changes. Otherwise your save changes won't go through or your uh, changes won't be saved. And even if you save the world, it won't save the changes that you made to chests or signs unless you click that save. The next uh, tab is sprites. I kind of already gave you a look at it. It's really straightforward. You have uh, a filter bar, a search bar here with a filter button on it. It has every sprite in the game uh, that is placeable, including decorations. And basically you just choose your sprite tool and you go through the list and choose whatever sprite you want to choose from the list and then you could just place it wherever you want in the game. Uh, it's extremely straightforward. If you know what you want to look for then you just type it in, press enter or filter and then you could find it easier. That's the sprite tab. Next we have clipboard and this is um, whenever you take your area select tool and you grab an area, say if I were to copy it, you'll see that it is now in my clipboard. Uh, the clipboard will save anything that you've copied during your uh, last playthrough session. So if I just copy a ton of stuff here, uh, the list will just expand more and more and more and everything that I've copied, uh, as long as Tedit is open, will be listed in here unless I remove them individually. So this is super handy if you wanna take builds from one world into another. So for instance, if I copy this cloud in the sky and then I go and I open uh, my flat tutorial world, let it load real quick, you'll see that I'm in the new world, but my clipboard remained the same. And I could just bring in that uh, cloud, the floating island that I copied from my clipboard and just paste it into the new world. Beneath that you have import schematic or image. Um, I don't really work with schematics often. I find them to be buggy. Tieta doesn't like to uh, work with them. Um, just, I, I don't know, I, I want it to work. I've just never had much luck with schematics, so I tend to avoid it. Um, but beneath that, you have these check marks, and this is indicating what you paste when you paste uh, whatever is in the clipboard. So if I don't want to paste empty tiles, uh, say I select that and I just grab this house here, you'll see that it places the house, but anywhere there would have been sky, it doesn't delete the area. Whereas if I have it uh, checked where it places the empty tiles and I place the house again, and I'll just place it right over the one I did before, you'll see that it counts all of the empty tiles and it actually pastes them. Uh, you could do the same thing with uh, pasting tiles or you could disable pasting tiles and then all it'll do is paste uh, liquids, walls, and wires. 
So if I were to just grab the same build again, just place it, you'll see it didn't place any of the tiles. I don't have any liquids or wires in this particular one. Uh, maybe this will be a better one to see. So I have liquids in here. You'll see that it places the walls, it places the liquids, but no tiles. Uh, you could do the same thing to toggle uh, walls, liquids, wires, or tiles on or off. And you could do any combination of them. If I just want tiles, I can just do tiles. Beneath that, for each individual uh, copy segment within your clipboard, you have a paste option. And this is how you can uh, kind of just paste whichever item you want. Um, if you were to press, press Control V on the keyboard, it'll only do the most recently used one. But if I wanted to just go back and get an old one, I, I would have to click paste. You could flip it along the x-axis or you could flip it along the y-axis. Uh, this will do some weird things with the sprites. Um, so with the platforms, you see that they haven't actually changed their shape. It'll do some weird things with sprites, sometimes deleting them entirely. But for liquids, walls, and tiles, and uh, wires, it works really well. Just uh, be careful if you're flipping along the X or Y axis with sprites. You could also remove the, uh, the selection from your clipboard, or you could export it as a schematic. Again, I've never really had good luck when exporting um, or importing schematics, so I don't really use that option too much. Next tab we have is NPC names. And this is where you come to add NPCs to the world, remove them from the world. I could just delete the die trader. It's gone. Um, I could come to this drop down arrow and I could select any NPC that I want. And then I could add it. It will add it to the center of the spawn point uh, right here. And it'll just name it. Uh, whatever kind of NPC it is, it is. so uh, it named this Truffle Truffle. So this is Truffle the Truffle. Uh, you just need to come in here and uh, give it a new name. I'll name it Bob. And now it'll be Bob the Truffle. You can do that for any NPC. Note that you can only have one NPC of each type on the world at a time. So if I try to make another Truffle, I'll get an error. Truffle is already on the map. You could also add NPCs like Santa Claus, but he will die instantly if you're not in Christmas. You could add uh, the Vortex, uh, Stardust, Nebula, and Solar Pillars. And these are kind of interesting if you're to uh, add them in. If I add one here, let's say. Um, so now I have a Solar Pillar. It will act the way a Solar Pillar does, except it won't trigger um progression to spawn the moon lord so you can kind of just use these to spawn solar enemies if you want for some reason uh it's up to you to experiment with but you could uh go into your points button that we talked about in t-edit 101 and move it wherever you want uh again it'll spawn all new npcs at your spawn point the next tab that we have is analysis this really doesn't do anything, but it does give you a good look at your world. So if you click analyze, it'll take a little while to load, but you can come through here. You see a bunch of binary stuff that won't really mean anything to you. You have other parts that don't really matter. What I use this for is um, I want to see how many of certain tiles that I have in the world. So you see that my world is 48.11% air that means there's no walls there's no um, tiles it's 41 percent of this world is empty space uh, oh not walls just the tile selection sorry um, then the next most common tile here is stone blocks you'll see that we have uh, 792 thousand of them and you could go through here and see every tile and every wor uh, wall that's in the world. 
you could see which chests are in the world, uh, what's in these chests. Like this one's mostly empty. You could see the coordinates for the chest and the way you read coordinates is you come down to the lower left here and you could see uh, the zero zero part of the map is the upper left hand corner and the bottom part of the map is uh, the bottom right hand corner on the coordinates which for this world is uh, 4199 by 1199 so we have the X and the Y axis increasing in that fashion and that's how you could uh, translate these coordinates here but it has your chest signs tiles everything about the world you could find on this massive list it's really not necessary it's just I find it interesting um, if you want to convert this into a text, you could either just select everything and copy, or you could just hit save and it'll save it as a text document. Um, the next tab, the final tab, is the kill tally. And when you click read, it'll tell you everything in the world that has been killed and how many times it's been killed. And really, you can't um, alter this in any way. You can't uh, edit like... I've killed 119 green slimes in this world and I haven't killed anything else. I can't go through here and change any of that, but if you were curious uh, what the statistics on your world are, that's what the tally tab is for. And again, you could save that as a text document as well. So that is all of the tabs within utilities. And that'll pretty much end our uh, T-Edit 102 episode. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Remember, if you're going to use T-Edit, be sure to back up your world saves before each use. You never want to end up with a corrupt world. Thank you all again for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and comment, and please consider subscribing to my channel. I'll catch you all later. Happy building. <laughs>